So Hippie is a good player. Top level. Ooh. Good. He was armored. That's an interesting one. Yasp. Going with 7 Panzer. No 5th Panzer Division. Interesting. Like, I'm pretty sure it's the best division just at the moment. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Their choices, obviously. And what we got here is an interesting match. Happy third US on the left side. No, on the right side. On the left side now. Gonna go with the scoreboard. Yasp on the right side. Bring in Spezial of Glaris. In trucks. One of the best units in the game currently. E55 Ace on the right side as well. M1A1 HA Abrams. Those are somewhat tough to deal with for the seventh Panzer. Like you can't crack them frontally with any of your tanks. You need either Panzer or Yeagers close by or you need to use air. But you have a lot of air. So question is guys, as this is a live game, who will win this? Who will win this? Hippie with the third armor or Yasp seventh Panzer. Let's go. Gamble your points away. And the match has started. It's all of there coming in. Of Claire BAMs. BRMs. One, uh, the only unit with, with exceptional optics out of all crown units currently in the vanilla version. In the beta version we also have the Fuchs with Razad, but that's not in this version yet, so yeah. Ooh. Not quite gotten there yet. Kiova. Trying to hit a transport, wasting its super expensive missiles on one BRM at least, but the rest all on 15 point trucks. Not quite what you want. It's a lot of terrorists in the south. Ooh, not quite able to get the kill yet. Oh my god, how often will they miss? Okay, they get the Bradley. Scout helicopter is firing at them, but scout helicopter is not that amazing at that. But at least it doesn't get shot back by the Spezial of Clarys. Meanwhile, MiG-21 versus F-111 HE. F-111 HE will at least escape with its life. But took quite some damage, so we'll be out for a while. And the Shilka, with its insane 50 point prize pool, um, killed a recon helicopter here. And heavy push in the center. M1A1HA goes way too deep! Oh my god, why? Hippie! Throwing it away! Oh my god, what a casualty! T55 versus M64s here. Yova Warrior had to retreat. Military police coming in. Mech rifles coming in as well. Mech rifles over here and Bradley's at least getting some kill on some T-55, but... Oh my god, losing the HA Abrahams is huge. EMP gets taken out. Bradley is doing well. Cluster bomber. Ooh, that's a lot of juicy targets. Okay, okay, that cluster bomber alone might have saved Hippie here from complete disaster. That cluster bomber was completely brutal, killing off a Shilka, killing off three T uh, T55s. But oh wow! Imagine now having the heavy, <laughs> the heavy Abrams. M imagine bringing that thing out now, after killing all that stuff off. Uh. Okay, game has somewhat stabilized again. But what a start! What a bloody start for both players here in this game. Mutchitzen. And the fire by the Bradleys and the Mech Rifles. Not quite in range for the RPG. No, they are in range of the RPG, for the RPG. Bradley bites the dust. Kiowa Warrior. Rightfully so. Disengages for now. Needs more missiles. Needs a repair. Okay, what an interesting hot start here. What an interesting hot start. Please don't just predict 10 points, guys. 10 point predictions are kinda meh. If you want to predict, predict a bit more. Mudchitzen over here. Not quite getting hit. Bomb layout. Not quite hitting there. MiG-21A8 coming in. 
fire team dragon coming in a bit more mech rifles military police fire team dragon here around mech rifle leader getting somewhat bullied here military police over here engaging mod schützen engineer flash nearly out of all the flash stunned for a second as well military police and engineer flash not able to beat the mod schützen kind of disappointing mech rifles over here trying to deal with the t55 meanwhile mig 21 with he not quite able to hit the engineer with flash mod schützen though killed the military police off and hit yasp is pushing in deep Ooh. Quite brutal. M35 coming around, M1A1 coming around. Supply truck for the Kiowa Warrior. Mech rifle leader gets a kill there. Is out of laws. Is hunted down by a lot of mod Schützen. Bradley not getting hit by the BMP, but doesn't see the BMP in time, it seems like. Well, it actually does. Okay. BMP isn't out of Malutka. That's why it couldn't fire another one. And the Bradley actually can retaliate, takes out the BMP. Fire teams with Dragon. Trying to come around, trying to get a kill onto the T55. Oh boy. Another Bradley getting taken out. Yasp slightly overextending. Brings in a leader into the center though, which should bring Yasp up to a plus 5. Leader over here gets killed off. Military police under fire. The other warrior should get repaired in a second. Y yes, it will. Has already all its hellfires back. He is fully repaired again. He is fully fueled again. Can come back into action. Mech rifle over here. Hits the T55. Puts it down to half life. Plus 5 for Yasp though. So Hippie under quite a lot of pressure. Brings in more fire teams with dragons and more mech rifles. Fire team with dragon over here. We'll hit this T72 frontally. Only dealing two damage, uh, three damage to this. So we'll need four more hits like that. Another one coming down. That one might not hit. Yes, out of line of sight. So Fire Team Dragon has to realign. The F111 tried to get the hit. Will survive at least. Get no hit on the T72 though. MiG 21A comes in too late once more. M1A1 here gets heavily hit by Mutchitson's RPG 7VL. Gets actually killed off by it. So another big tank here biting the dust for Hippie. Really, Hippie super over aggressive with the tanks. Life is 5 for Yasp continues. More mech rifles coming in. Bertram's dragons coming in as well. MiG 21 keeps on flying patrol over the battlefield. Bradley engaging Motschützen. Gets the W there. With the Bushmaster. Fire team in another Bradley coming around. One of the reasons why you want to bring the fire teams with dragons. Like, dragons are decent ATGM. The fire teams have okay ish firepower, but obviously low hit points. But they come with a cheap Bradley. Mech Ruffles coming in here as well. Mech Ruffle over here. Getting eliminated. Shulka going blood. F111 coming in again. Under heavy fire. MiG-21 not quite getting the kill. But gets the kill onto the cluster bomber. Can the cluster bomber at least get the Shulka? It can. HE bomber not doing too much. MiG-21 flying around. HE bomber fizzling somewhat. T-72 this time not getting hit by the dragon. Dragon will fire one more time here soon. T-72 under fire by some dragons but not getting hit. Uh, T-55 I mean. T-72 gets hit. I don't know why that is a... what? That's a weird bug. Uh, okay, can somebody clip that please? Can anyone please in the chat clip that and send it to me on Discord? That would be lovely. Because that's for sure a bug that shouldn't be there. I oh, know it's clipping up here. No, wait, it's just the uh, merging. Okay, all fine. It should not merge that quickly, I think. Uh, yeah. Like, this is a bit too far for the merger of the zoom out. So, 
of the unit cards. Uh, okay, it's not a bug, it's just weird implementation. So maybe still slip it. Nope, third US armor. I don't think it's a bit too expensive it's all around. Like it misses a cheap tank. If the third US armor would have the normal M1 Abrams instead of only the M1A1 and the M1A1 HA, it would be a really good division. But it misses cheaper armor. If it would have have like some patterns, it would be amazing. But even the the normal M1 would be really good. No, even against fifth armor, it's just too expensive. It's just not really cost effective. Go Cobra flying around. Maybe finally bringing in the leader unit. Reducing the tick of Yasp to a plus three. Getting a bit more time for a comeback. Tow Cobra. First of all, why do you even bring in Tow Cobras as third US? Like, one of the reasons you play that division is for getting a Apaches. And second of all, yeah, you know about Shilkas being a thing, so be careful. But yeah, Tow Cobras don't make a sense at all to bring around against that division. Shilkas just clipped them in no time. Meanwhile, Kyova Warriors can keep their distance at least with the Hellfires, and Apaches actually can tank them for a bit. Meanwhile, Bradley coming around over here. Plus three for Yasp. All the best players currently agree that Fifth Panzer is the best division in the game, so. Uh, and I agree with them. Like, the infantry is also pretty good. It has a lot of cheap and pretty solid infantry as well. The Jaegers and so on. All pretty decent. Mm -hmm. Sicherungs. And 1A1 coming in on the north. So, yeah. Like, Derek and Ski and so say that Fifth is currently the number one with quite a lot of space. And I pretty much agree. Engineer moving forward. Scout over here. Yeah, it's getting completely decimated. And yes, still on a plus three. Leader over here should reduce it to a plus one for a spit, but Spavagon is on the way to capture the flag up here. Oh my god, more Shulkas. One A1 coming in here. Can Hippie turn it around? Will be tough. Will be tough. There's a lot of stuff. Mutt trying to come in here. Could be actually on a plus two now for a second, but leader is completely unprotected here, so that will not hold out for too long. Yeah, somewhat over aggressive there, and the M1A1HA is really rough. Abraham's around here. Watch it some kind of moving forward. Military police coming in as well. Another mutt trying to come around to try to sneak in somewhere. But Bradley will be overrun easily by the tanks here. By the Mutschitzen. And heavy push by Yasp. Yasp has this in the pocket, I think. This is looking really odd for Yasp. Mech rifles, military police. Don't think Hippie can hold this out for too long. Mech HE bombers. Oh my god. Quite a lot of them. There's no AA whatsoever. There's an F111 trying to come in, but that actually gets already strafed by the MiG 21. The MiG 21. HEs don't have any missiles, so they only have their 20mm or 23mm um, autocannon. The classic 23mm of the Soviets. Since World War II, that's their standard to go, go for. Um, since the IL-2. But they, even they can strafe the F-111 one, one with that. M1A1 here, at least wins that fight. Yeah, tank fights still can go well, but the question is... Like, you have to really engage tanks with your tanks. Shilka gets engaged, and you really have to be careful with your M1A1s. 
you hemorrhage them away like hippie you just never get into the combined arms you want in this game give a warrior also underutilized currently mig 21 though could hunt it out easily so it needs to be somewhat careful but there's no stingers or so whatever around because you could never afford them hippie never had the money around to afford any of those well, there's enough Shilkas and even Strellas, uh, infantry Strellas around now that have 4 damage now, so they're somewhat worthwhile. Currently combined with Shilka, so the Shilka only needs to deal 6 damage to your plane to kill it. After the Strella hit it, plus 3 for Yasp, going well. Motchitsen coming in, T55's coming in. And I don't think Hippie can turn this around. Trying to sneak the leader into the center maybe. M48, uh, M728 with the HE shell. Trying to kill off the Shilka. Only deals 2 damage. You have a Warriors missile flying somewhere. Not quite sure where that was going. XML420. What a name. And welcome to the channel. <laughs> nice. Kiowa Warrior. Still insane range with the Hellfire. 2800 meter. That's more range than the Shilka has, so you can hit Shilkas from outside of range with the Kiowa Warrior. Well, amazing plane on the defense, a, a helicopter on the defense. You just have to defend it against someone, uh, something. You just have to defend it against some, against planes with something that way around. <laughs> Having some issues finding the word 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 stir, so that it just doesn't get shot down by a single MiG twenty one, which is the issue against. Um. Two the seventh like even a single mig 21 dying for it is still super worthwhile because this is 175 points mig 21 is 85 points so yeah you're still up 90 points even if you trade for it availability for the mig 21 also way better which is making the kiowa quite risky because a single missile hit and it's dead single missile hit from a plane so that's quite the issue and even with strafing the MiG-21 can kill it, I think, quite regularly. MiG-21's here, coming in with HE again, no AA around. SU-22 with Cluster, also getting good kill. SU-22 also getting the kill onto the Kiowa Warrior, that's what I'm talking about. F-15 Eagle now around, but everything just died. <laughs> like, everything on the front line just died. MiG-21 HE goes down, but you have to do that quite a couple of times with the F-15 to actually pay off. And another helicopter going down in the south. F-111 coming in over here. With cluster. No AA around here. So that one might actually be juicy. MiG-21 AA is not around. It's doing quite well, but not quite getting a kill there. And Yasp is getting quite close to the 2000 points. Not that far off anymore. The leader unit that was about to sneak in here is not around anymore. T-55 and T-72 have to be careful, but mech rifles get routed, so they won't be able to get the kill there. These one could be, but they are not engaging. And this mech rifle actually might get killed off? No. Okay. Not for now, but close to 1,700 points. We have 120 points made per minute, so not even 3 minutes remaining here. Now, or Hippie, who... At least neutralize the whole situation, and I don't quite see that coming. There's not even a leader unit. Oh no, there's a leader unit now coming in, which will try to sneak in over here. Has to be careful though with the T-72, looking down on it. F-15 flying in the sky, still an absolutely beautiful, absolutely gorgeous plane. MiG-21 BIS AA gets the kill though, what? Mutual destruction? That's not what you want <laughs> with an F-15. That's really not what you want with an F-15 versus a MiG-21. You want something better than mutual destruction versus a 85 point plane. <laughs> and this really shows you the struggle of 3rd US at the moment. It's just not cost efficient. Everything in your division is cool and good, but a bit too expensive. And if you hemorrhage away your combined arms at the beginning of the game, you will try uh, play catch up all game long and never really catch up in the end and with a plus five now as the north is neutralized yes we'll finish it even faster as only 100 points are to go got helicopter trying to come in 
BMP-1P on the fire over here. Shilka trying to hit the scout helicopter over here. We'll get the kill. And we are only seconds away from victory here. Boy, yes. Leader unit arrives in the center, but already under fire. And it's still a plus two for Yasp. This leader unit might not be long for this world. Fire is with flames and so on, pushing forward. Mech rifles over here, trying their best to deal with tanks. But T-55 is stunning them down. Took some damage, but not insanely much. And the units in the north also have the stuff surrounded. And only... Two seconds now, so GGVP to Yasp in game number one, getting a W versus Hippie here, which is a surprise because Hippie is quite up there in the ladder, but Yasp totally dismantled him here. So, as I said again, third US armored, currently not a good pick, and especially not against the cheapest deck in the game. Like against the cheapest deck in the game, playing the most expensive one, and then <laughs> losing your most expensive unit right at the get go with the HA Abrams was a tough start, was a really tough start. But VP to Yasp, getting on the pressure from the get-go, getting the W in the end. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Game number two, Hippie changed divisions to 8th Infantry. Also, and so did Yasp. Not to 8th Infantry though, but he stays in the German territory, switches on the other side of the Iron Curtain, and goes into the shoes of the 5th Panzer Division. So, as I said before, I think this is the best division currently in the game. Some of the best players in the game agree with me on that one. Or better, I agree with them. <laughs> let's put it that way around. So, let's see if Yasp can do it once more against Hippie. Or if Hippie maybe can step it up a bit. Uh, eighth? Quite a decent deck. They're pretty good against Seventh Panzer. Really, the M1 has some really good matchups there. And so T72s and so on. M1 struggles a bit more against the Leopard 2s. Still pretty good matchups against the Leopard 1s and M48s though. So let's see how that goes. Kiva Warrior once more around. And overall pretty good infantry on both sides. Like a lot of mech rifles and with laws and normal mech rifles with dragons. On side of Hippie. Toe Cobra around as well. Why does he like the Toe Cobra so much? I don't think it's a good unit. We see it already for the second time. Like, I, he played it instead of Apaches in game number one, which is just mind-boggling to me. Like, why why would you not play Apaches? Apaches are amazing, if you micro them well. Um, Toe Corvers just never work out for me. I have never seen them work out, and they're pretty expensive now as well. Like, they're 125 points, so... I'm not quite sure they're worthwhile. Looks over here, coming around. Bench, Bear, Jäger, Flare. On the other side, Bradley CFVs. You go off Clever as well. And the mentioned Kiva Warrior. But you have to be careful as, as Hippie. You don't just want to waste it on on stupid transports. You really want to micro these. You might even want to turn off the weapons first. And then target fire with them. Onto something maybe that as a Lux. Like Lux. Trading a Hellfire for a Lux. Worthwhile. 50 point unit. Um... You have four of these, you can reload them obviously, but for a 15 point truck, not so much. Like if you, obviously, if you get the unit inside of it killed, sure, but against an unloaded unit, it's quite horrible. <laughs> quite horrible. We also already have a Roland on two on the field from the get-go. On the other side, no AA again for Hippie. So let's see how this goes. Let's speed it up a bit so we go into the match directly. This game was started a while ago, so we have a bit of leeway. They are a bit ahead of us. Uh, but I should have gotten you guys into a prediction again. Let's do it a short one this time. Who will win? Hippie 8th or Yasp the 5th Panzer? Let's only give you 2 minutes. And here we go. Should have done that before. I mean, he has the Kiova. Kiova fires a missile. And gets a hit on the full Jaeger off clear. That's worthwhile. That's worthwhile for sure. 
You want to be careful around here. What does it hit this time? It hits the looks. Ah, it misses. Okay, but got a good kill there already. Jaeger of Clerics are 70 points, so 85 points killed off. 70 plus the 15 point transport. But heavy recon push here overall. Gets the looks kill. Kiova Warrior should retreat somewhat now, but Kiova Warrior for now being bloody good. Jaeger of Clever has to be careful. Supply drug already coming in. Kiova Warrior doesn't want to die here. Ooh, F4F already coming in. Yeah, the Kiova Warrior should have disengaged. I'm pretty sure the F4F was called in for the Kiova, not for the F411, but gets the kill there anyways. I might still be able to come around for the Kiova. Hippie, please micro this. Away. Get away. Be the one that got away. Uh, f Hangs around. Now is called in upon the Kiova, not getting the kill on the first run. Jaeger holding the line. M48 now even engaging. Oh no, yeah, you don't want to lose it like this. Kiova is such a... It's a really heavy micro taxing unit. But it obviously... Like, it's such a class cannon. But obviously, if you micro it well, it can be amazing. But if you don't micro it at all, it's not worthwhile. Now it didn't pay off again. Built 85 plus 50 points. Which is 235 points. It costs 175 points. So it's one more... 40 points down in that engagement. So, yeah. And it didn't need to be that way. He could have retreated it and landed it and be safe. M1 over here, though. Engaging M48. Should be able to do it. And gets the kill, yep. M1 in the middle, trading pretty well. Helping out with dealing with all the armored vehicles down here. Roland and Gephardt are around at least for AA. The F111 getting killed off, though. Quite painful for Hippie. You don't have Im that many of them around. You only have two. Uh, but the M1 can deal a lot of damage to all the infantry here now. Because one of the infantry issues of 5th Panzer is that none of them has ATGMs. You have the Milan on your vehicles. On the next patch you will even have more Milans on vehicles. As you will get Fuchs options with Milans. Which will make the divisions even better. Uh, which is a bit scary. Not gonna lie. But you don't have any on your infantry, so the M1 can just bully this infantry from a mile away. Another M1 coming around. Panzer Grenadier is here getting bullied. And Tippy, way better start than last time. Even though the Kiova Warrior, I mean, it at least got close to paying off, but it still could have been better, obviously. But even though that happened, uh, like the rest went pretty well. Yes, going in quite aggressively, but not quite working out there. Meanwhile, Jäger of Clarus in the north, engaging Jäger of Clarus in the north. <laughs> Toe Cobra fired all but its toes, but even of the toes it fired a couple already. So, should go for reload. Yes, will do so now. And Hippie cleans out all of Yas' forces up here. And once more, really bloody start, but this time with the way better ending for Hippie. So it's this time Hippie who has the big edge. Killing off the Gephardt now. Can Yasp do bring it around once more? M35 coming in. Oh, yeah, Yasp won game number one, sorry. Bradley versus Leopard. Leopard goes down to the Bradley. Oh my god, yeah, Hi Hippie is styling on Yasp now. And. I think one is issue Yas has one now is that he's pretty blind. Like, <laughs> you got a player here, not seeing the Bradley over here. And he has no unit, no infantry units here whatsoever that can scout for all of this. Jaeger's in the open at least he sees, but yeah, that tank came out of the blue. Leopard at least will retaliate, and Leopard one shot that M1 Abrams. Woo! Okay, 15mm gun. Okay. But Jaeger's disappear. And the north. At least the units of Hippie once more caught out in the open. It, Hippie could have done better there. But Bradley still unseen. And Bradley trying to get a kill on the Gephardt. Gephardt is trying to disengage. Will be able to do so. Bradley keeps on shooting though. And Pioneers. Vampros under fire. Hooks goes down to a toe 2. How much it can get into the building. Pioneers engaging. But tank in the south dies as well, and yeah, Yasp has n next to no units and is also 
completely blind. And this is not good. Yeah, this is not good. Hippies. <laughs> how can this shit... <laughs> like, this is so, such a bullshit. This thing fired how many... Things... How many shots do I know? You should have spotted it at some point, at least with an input unit. Like, this close. Like, I guess it's... I'm still really struggling with the scaling of this game, because... Like, the game tries to tell you that's... What, 1000 meters? Even 1500 meters? Sorry to tell you, game, this is not 1500 meters. I jogged 10,000 kilometers lately. I wish it would be as short as it shows you in this game. And it's a bit longer. Uh, 10 kilometers are a bit longer. Than what it shows you here. The scaling is a bit off. By uh, maybe even 2? A multiplier of 2? At least by a multiplier of 1.5? I would say it's closer to 2. The multiplier. Yeah. Yeah. Like this building is never 100 meters long. For example. Might even be bigger than two. Like, what is this building long? Like 20 meters? The game tries to tell you it's 100. Like that might be my biggest drive of spotting. Maybe that's that's maybe it's just the the scaling that is fucked up. Uh, makes it so hard to understand for me. Pioneers over here versus Jaegers over here. But yeah, it just often feels wrong. FOF disengaging. Because the scaling is nowhere settled in. Like, yeah, this is... From here to here is maybe... Maybe 200 meters. And game tries to tell you it's... It's one kilometer. What the fuck? Like... Yeah, this is maybe 200... 50 or so meters. And also, oh, is the stream really laggy right now? Oh no. Or oh, it doesn't just look like it for me. Because well, FPS on my end was good, but my second screen showed me it looked a bit laggy. Leopard 2A3 here is dealing with the outflare. Yes, still having more points because Hippy hasn't invested in too, too many command units yet. And maybe also once more a bit over ambitious. A bit overly deep into the enemy line. How much it's in here getting sh hit? But Leopard getting hit. And here versus how much it's in over here. How much it's in are stunned down. But once they're unstunned, the Pioneer who is down to one hit point will fall in no time. Yes. One unit. Has to run around. Bunny over here gets hit. Focus goes down. Yeah, and that scaling issue might be the biggest issue of the game because it just yeah those the spotting range numbers are fine. Like yeah, you don't want I don't want a, uh, a better spotting range. Like I don't want something to spot something on one thousand meter range when it would be normal scaling. But in-game, 1,000 meters is just not that much. <laughs> so, yeah, I kind of want it to spot on 1,000 meters in-game. Because just the in-game 1,000 meters are nowhere next to realistic 1,000 meters. Leopard over here. Where's the Jaeger? Finally a flamethrower. Coming in over here. Getting gitched by the Jaeger. Getting hit. Alouette running into a pivot. Pivot gets the kill. Hippie now at a plus four, but Hippie quite over aggressive. Got a couple of bad trades lately. And has to be careful because there's not much behind the front line for Hippie either. And the front line is just so far away from the reinforcements. So, and obviously, yes, but reinforcing quite close to it. But plus seven for Hippie. <laughs> Means that there is a big timer on Yasp's clock, and question is, can Yasp do anything about it? Because obviously, also heavily hurt, heavily hurt. I'm like yeah, yeah, I I wouldn't be able to spot something that is one thousand five hundred meters away in real life, 
But I would, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can even see a normal human with normal eyes on this range. If they're standing up, for example. Because that's like 250 meters or so. Like, yeah. So, sure, in camouflage 250 meters is also distance, but it's quite a difference to spot. <laughs> yeah. Or well, like, maybe like 300 something meters. It's, 250 is too little, but yeah. Yeah, I guess your like 3.33, like 400 meters or so is right. The, the, the number you came up with there. Or someone else came up with. Because, yeah, that might be really the biggest issue. And they already reduced it. Like, that's... But, yeah, it's it's weird. It's kind of annoying. Raven coming around. Trying to find a target for its seat. And there is a target for the seat in the south. Gephardt also not turned off, so the Raven might find it. Yes. Missile is flying. Misses, though. F4F comes around. Raven has to be careful. But there is a pivot around. One pivot went down. As I said, Hippie has to be careful. Lost the unit on the front line. Pivot engaging the F4F. Dealing only 3 damage. Like, the, the, the difference between Sparks is kind of crazy. Like, Pivot is more expensive than the Shulka. And deals just so much less damage. The Pivot should be slightly stronger. And the... Uh, um, Shulka should be quite a bit more expensive. Yeah, yes, now has a bit of a frontline again. Uh, but obviously still needs to f work on getting enough to the frontline. Uh, 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 he's a force to the frontline. And the ATGMs here are a problem. Leopard went out without infantry and gets killed off. And uh, that Leopard was important. Having that Leopard 2A3 in was really important up in the north. Losing us it smallest the chance, chances of yes big time in this game and losing the leader here in the center as well still has a leopard over here has another big leopard over here so yeah he would have had three task forces with a big boy now it's only two task forces with a big boy and this big boy over here is not doing much so that's a bit of a shame more units coming in over here meanwhile for M M1A1 over here. Engages against the Leopard. Gephardt got killed off. Leopard is still around, but one more important unit there killed off. Oh, yes. The air protection is gone. Amateur's on the fire. Yes, moving in. But yes, needs some leader units soon. And needs some more successful engagements. And this one is a horrible engagement now, because with the Leopard being down. The support tank can come around and just completely annihilated the whole formation up there. Mech rifles over here, moving forward as well. They can't engage the foxes actually anymore because they shot all the dragons into the leopard. Killed it with the last one. But the pioneers also can't deal with this M728 and that's a big problem. Because that one will just annihilate them. These Jaegers also running into their death. And yeah, he needs a leopard up here, he doesn't have it anymore. And this is disaster. This is disaster here, and I'm pretty sure these two players will tie out in this game as well. As yeah, A is gone, so the A10 can come around as well. Hunting down the Leopard 2A3 over here. Gets the hidden. Gets even hidden onto the F4F. Can the Pivot actually finish it off this time? Oh, it brings it down to one hit point, and the F16 comes in for the kill. A10 goes home. It some damage to the leopard, and Yasp seems to be out of this. All that in the north, southern formation not that big, no leader units. Ah, now a leader unit on the way. Now some AA units as well on the way. But And he kills quite a bit of stuff here actually, but it, I think it's too little too late. Alouette's also not doing much here at all. Capward at least putting a bit of damage onto the F-16. More infantry units coming in, but it's all plus 7, it's already... 1,500 points now for Hippie. We have 7 points. 7 times 4. That's 280 points per minute. So, less than 2 minutes away from victory. And yes, only might be able to neutralize the center. That's still plus 4 afterwards. And until then, the tick will already have advanced quite a bit further. It's actually a plus 9 now, which is just insane. As the northern town also gets taken. 
Thunderbolt coming around, nearly 400 points per minute, 360 that is. Uh, Raven coming around as well, Siat still on. Raven fires into the dead Gebhard, not onto the one in the north. Well, leader unit also gets taken out and yet it's the time for our <laughs> gasp to just step out of here because that leader unit was the one that was supposed to slow down time, but there's just not enough leader on the way. Yes, we'll play it to the end. But it doesn't matter here. The plus nine will just finish it in a couple of seconds. Mech rifles coming in. F-16 getting the kill onto a plane. And this is over. Hippie will get the W. Leopard coming in as well. M-113 gets killed off. And Hippie had it. Hippie has the game. 2,300 uh, 2, to 510 kills. Yeah, in the end, it was a slaughter. It looked for a while like Yasp had the shot on bringing it around again. But two really, really clean victories, but for two different players in the series. So, GGP to Hippie in game number two, bringing it around again. Showing why he is so high on the ladder. And, yeah, tying it in the end. Not the best game out of Hippie in game number one. But at least getting the second the point in the second game and having some okay stats now i think one in game number is week one yeah one win one tie one loss overall in the tournament so far for hippie the loss against the best player of the tournament so not that shameful there losing against derek especially as the game's 